Yesterday, Foot decided to play this bizarre comp on Icebox that initially had me like this. But by the end of it, it was more like this. No! 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 So what went so wrong? Well, let's start off with the Phoenix, which on its own is a weird pick anyway, right? And it did have some nice moments. Still got flash. Still got the molly. Does have ult, but uh, they're double stacking this. There's a flash and a swing. Oh, he's caught Hoodie. That's an issue. Yeah, it's all time. He's running it down. Cloud up for it, trying to close the gap. Does he get back in time? Cloud stands and he falls. Yenajay. What a monster! It was uh, their bread and butter somewhat, and that might be a dead cracks over there. Oh, has he got moves? He absolutely does. Nice to evade, but Yenajay gets played in here on this angle. That's gorgeous from him. Easy to get overwhelmed, but he can stall out with a util. Look at this. Instantly cycles it, gives him a way out of danger. But outside of those couple moments in a couple of those rounds, my main problem with the Phoenix is that I don't see how Phoenix is better than KO on Icebox. And really, you could apply that to pretty much every time someone picks Phoenix is why are you picking this instead of KO? Often the only reason will be, you know, for the ult and just grabbing ult orbs and ulting four times and a half or something. That's really the only reason you probably should pick Phoenix over KO, if I'm being honest. But particularly on Icebox, yeah, you can grab an ult orb, you know, here and there. Particularly the A1 can be grabbed by the defenders and the B1 can be grabbed by the attackers quite often. But I don't think that that's enough to say that Phoenix is better than KO on, on Icebox because KO has a lot of good utility on Icebox. And I think some of the Phoenix flashes, whilst they do go off faster... Icebox, you know, can be a map with some bigger spaces where you do need a, f a flash that can go further than a Phoenix flash can, right? And KO obviously gives you that. Obviously, the knife is very good as well. The KO ult is also very good. And in fact, we'll dive into it a bit more later on in the video of another reason this comp struggled that KO could have helped solve. Second thing I want to talk about is Sova Fade, because this is obviously a very, very odd pairing that you don't normally see, but I actually kind of really like. Being revealed, in my opinion, is just broken, right? Knowing exactly where someone is, whether that's to get a spam kill from it, or just having the information that they are there, that's really, really strong. And there was actually more combos than you might think with these agents. But now he's got to respect it. Look at the utility, just stalling him out. He doesn't want to overextend here. He's got the site. He's done his job. Now they need to get that plant down, but this is the problem. You heard it. He's got the tag. He's got the frag. Fortunately for... Oh! Patino for free as well. So yeah, this was really cool. Pairing a silver ult and a fatal. Of course, the fatal brings their health down, which means that they only need one ping, as you see here from Fatino from the silver ult to get a kill. But then, of course, in true fashion of this game, they're in a 5v3 against an eco, and Foot managed to lose this round. Do anything in this post plan now. Cloud's still alive. Hoodie's still there. They've got opportunity to stall this. These snake bites have been a pain here for Foot in the past. They've got to break the back line. They've got to get in their faces. Hoodie stands and delivers, finding yet a J and seeing it. They're now dwindling in numbers. They still haven't broken that back line. They've taken down Hoodie, but listen to it. You can hear it on the other side. Cloud gonna send this downtown and get it halfway. But they still haven't got the full defuse here. And look at the HP on Ada Captain. Five HP and time is not on his side. Cloud desperately trying to come back. The shock dart. Shock dart should be the end of it. It is. But really, there was more chances to utilize little combos like that that they just didn't, to be honest, for the rest of the game. Like this round here, round number 19, where they're coming to the attack side, and straight away there's a combo that they never really did a lot, and that is Nuki's going to come and grab the ult orb here. And again, with Fade and Sova, like, you can go for a Seize and a Shock Dart here. It's very common to see, you know, a Snake Bite and a Shock Dart come into this, but you can add a Seize to it if you want and just make sure that they can't even escape. But then again, they went for the Sova ult here, and you could see, uh, sorry, the Fade ult there, but you see that they do have the Sova ult as well, right? And the thing is here... Again, these players are deafened. They get caught by that fatal just there. And now we're going to actually send prowlers in as well, right? So you can see the prowlers on the map just here. And they don't solve all this, right? And I get it that, you know, giants now have a lockdown because they grabbed that auto. But still, this is free kills potentially, right? And the prowlers tell you where they are. And you think of how many things they could use here, you know, with adding in maybe a fade horn, a Sovadar, a drone to just help all of this. And then the prowler tells you where they are as well. And you're deafened as well, so you've got people scaling up and you can't even hear them for these players. Why didn't they do it? And instead, it plays out like this. For them. It, it, it could potentially, but this is this is really risky. Okay, Fatini was able to turn in time to at least deny J further impact. Now you're going to hear all of these ults coming through, right? Lockdown Zed, they're just spamming these out. Seen it. The one to find Hoodie. The plant yet to come in, though. Look towards that spike. Look towards what Fatinio is doing. 
right down Finding here. both of them, the spike now falls. And this was a heavy invested round from foot. This is problems. This is dire straits. This is down to one man and it is wrapped. One thing I was particularly excited for with the Silver and Fade together is something that they did in the very first round of the game. Line of sight down there. Coutinho waiting to see if anyone's going to push through towards rafters. But for now, Spike's down. So at least Giant X do have the time on their side. But look at the chip damage. Got to be a little careful to not get any of those moments capitalized on here. But big information revealed. Cnid wants to springboard in. This is a big chance. And... Not clean enough, One really. Um, hold on, you have to uh, excuse me. Whoa. What? Did you see it? Because it was this. It was putting both the Silver Dart and the Fade Haunt down at the same time together, right? Doing this, because this is hard to destroy, right? It's hard to destroy both before it goes off and you get revealed. And that's what we want, right? And they did this in the very first round, making me think they were going to do it later on, but they just didn't. Now, I would say to Foot when they do this here, right? This probably isn't the best way of doing it when you put them right next to each other because you do make it somewhat easy to destroy, right? Because they're right next to each other. But in theory, there are possibilities where you put the Silver Dart, you know, on one side of the site here that the Silver Dart would come across, you know, but back here instead, the Fade Haunt goes in here and anyone that's trapped in this corridor can't look both ways and it takes a lot of coordination between giants then to know how to destroy both at the same time and i was dying for them to do that kind of combo over and over and over again but actually as far as i can tell they only did it in the first round and then never did it ever again and a lot of other rounds look like this one instead where we're not gonna use our silver and fade util until we're actually coming in onto the site right so you would think okay we can bombard them with utility but instead take a look at this right it's one drone in on its own, and okay, it does find a tag onto Cloud and eventually does push him back. Okay, that's fine. And then we're just going to see a Fade Haunt in a second just come in on its own. That's very easy to destroy, right? Look at that. Giant's chilling. We stall out then. We can't go anywhere. We're then just going to take random fights. See, Ned dies. And then we're just in a bad spot, right? Instead, what we could do here, I mean, you think of all the things that we pot potentially got and all the things that we can combo from when this drone is first coming in, right? We're on an eco, by the way, as well, right? So we're looking for any way to create some advantage. We could dart, drone, fade, haunt, prowler, all at the same time and send our phoenix in behind it, you know, with then, with then a flash, you know, and try and get a kill off that. And instead, we just go one by one, making sure that it's easy enough for giants to destroy it all so that we don't actually find any meaningful advantage. Now let's come to the third part of this weird comp, which is the chamber pick, which also has its big weaknesses. Because of course, as I'm sure you're all well aware, chamber only has one trap, and one trap is not enough to cover mid, right? And so the map would sometimes end up looking like this, where we've got the one chamber trap, but we can just walk here if we want or do this, and there's nothing stopping us. Right, and if you go for a more aggressive setup and trying to help set up your chamber, you just don't know what's going on. And this round will be a good showcase of that. This is a horrific round, by the way. This is an awful round of Valorant. And, and uh, oh, it just, it, this, this, this round will hurt your brain. But Regar comes into mid, and Giants didn't exploit this nearly enough, by the way. I mean, they could have absolutely destroyed it. If they just sent someone lurking mid every round, they would have destroyed them. But you see here, they walk up into mid. But have no clue what's really going on. Mr. Fallen, you know, he's taking a look around. Oh, surprise, you know, because we've got no idea what's going on in mid. And he ends up dying to Redgar coming underneath here. Because again, we've got no idea what's going on in mid. And you're going to see Redgar is actually going to get a second kill. This Viper's Pit, I don't know what's happened to pro teams. They've decided that Viper's Pit is like no longer a good ult or something because they keep using it in these awful ways. I mean, what is this? They can't deal with mid anyway. Why do we need to use... What are we doing, Giants? And just watch the rest of this round. Redgar is going to find this kill here uh, in a second as well. Uh, onto the fade just here. And and then somehow, for win a 3v5 with this awful Viper Spit. Because Giants decide to do an A split. It's awful. going to play Disruption, right? Try and find that pinch towards A and isolate out of Captain like you had mentioned. It is still going up middle, though. That's the curious part. They didn't try and back around towards A. And actually, seen it's big. found Hoodie. I, I don't know if I like this as much, because Adder Captain gets played in a little here. He's heard all of this. That's it's a catch on down. the cross. Adder Captain going to know there's another player as well. Chip damage done. Giant X had way more of an opportunity, but for now, does Cloud get affected by this? A little bit on the way out, but mostly going to keep his HP in a decent position. His belt timing. And that's what I was about to talk about here. Yet a J, the timing on his flank. But look at this from Nookie. Heads up work here. Who sees who first? But again, Yet a J. Maybe pursued, but he's certainly not prey. Cned, another step towards the site now. It's going to be the alarm bells ringing because Nookie's got to get back. Oh, the what? time! Yeah, the You're nasty with it. What? Come on. How are you winning that? And then the final thing 
is one problem that pretty much everyone has on Icebox, right? That this comp that Foot ran doesn't really solve. And that is, how do you plant the spike? So anytime you're playing this kind of comp, right, where we've got no Sage, no Harbor, and even, you know, like a KO can help you with this because he can suppress people from, you know, sending utility, snake bites, or nano swarms, all that to stop you from planting. So even KO can help, you know, a bit, which again is another reason why, you know, KO probably would have been better with Phoenix. But if you're going to do this, and that's how you've decided to play, how do you get the spike down, right? Well, the truth of it is you've got to do what they do in this round, which is you've got to push deep and take enough space so that it will be safe. I like that dark cover Just thrown over. out by Redgar as well. Just makes it a little bit more difficult and forces out the run it back from Yedijay to clear out these angles, push past these smokes. He's got a lot of information off that though. Should have seen a whole lot of players back there by CT. Now for the post plan, what do we have really? Uh, out of captain with a little bit of kit, but with Mr. Fallen down, they don't have the same sort of effect, right? They can't depend on all of that utility. So they will need to posture up. They will need to take Ooh. a fight and that'll, well, that'll certainly help out matters. Just a shot in the dark and it works. Look at Yedijay, this guy Tiny. is so confident. He's such a nasty little player. Look at him, they had no idea. He was so ready for the follow-up, but great work from out of captain in the back lines as well. Down to two apiece for the HP lower, dwindling, out of captain down to eight, but still alive and still enough. But again, Foot really didn't play around this weakness and ended up not pushing deep and giving themselves space to plant quite often, like even in this round where they're in a 5v3 with a Viper's Pit. Don't even talk about it, it like breaks <laughs> my heart, but Hoodie has Jump to give away the game. Good and now he's uh, a little screwed here. I don't know how much he can really do. Whoa! Nothing. Okay. Nothing. You know, it was a good try. NT, any more information? Oh, the risky. Yeah, the J. Well, he knows where it's coming from, but Fatinho is always going to find some impact here. Mr. Fallen's gone down, but this time they've got the Viper's Pit to depend upon as well, so that should facilitate somewhat of a safer plant. And I say that, Fatinho could have find out a captain. This guy is just immovable in this. And this is going to be, again, another problem. Yellow J has gone down. Now it's really on Cned, who has the rifle, yeah, maybe cracks with that advanced positioning. Strike but no, Fatinho is on fire. He is coming alive for this side exactly when they needed him. And so you're probably thinking, oh, TMV just hates this comp. Don't ever play it again. But that's not true. The thing is, I think the foot just didn't play to how the comp should be played. They didn't play around their weaknesses. They didn't really combo their utility as well as they could have done. And so they ended up losing as a result.